from actually saving lives in a dire situation, or from overcoming an extreme obstacle to becoming a musical or mathematical genius seemingly overnight. We've got some pretty amazing people that we are going to be talking about on today's top 10 list. Before I dive into this video, you guys, though, I have a very exciting announcement. We have a brand new gaming channel launching on January 22nd. Viper Girl will be streaming everything from Minecraft to Five Nights at Freddy's to Cyberpunk and so much more. Check out this promo video that we're just about to show you and make sure after you're done this video, you subscribe to the channel. You won't want to miss it. Oh my gosh, I almost died. I almost died. I thought you were a cactus, my friend. I thought you were a cactus. We've got iron, baby. Yes. Okay. My main goal is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> Bro. Ah. No, I'm gonna fight you with a pork chop. No, come here, come here. This is awesome. Let's get into our list. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot today, we have Dr. Anthony Sesoria. In 1994, Anthony was the only orthopedist in his county area of New York and was working unbelievably long hours while also trying to raise his three children. One night after having hung up a payphone, the booth he was in got struck by lightning, which jolted and then tossed the doctor down the street. The lightning strike even caused him to have a heart attack, but he miraculously survived the night. Surviving a lightning strike should already be considered a superpower, but Dr. Sisoria took it one step further. After the accident, something changed in him and he began craving classical music and had pieces of complex music coming to him in dreams, despite the fact that he was absolutely not a musician or a composer. He ended up learning how to play the piano and being able to dictate the music that he was creating in his mind onto paper and began creating these amazing pieces of music. In our number nine spot today, we have Jason Paget. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. Until a September night in 2002, Jason was a dude who liked to go out with friends, get drunk, and meet girls. That is until a night when his whole world changed. That September night while Jason was out, he was attacked and robbed by two men outside of a bar. Jason sustained a pretty bad brain injury from the attack that left him too afraid to leave his home for the next few years unless absolutely necessary. While Jason ended up having to deal with pretty severe OCD as a result of the attack, something else also started to happen. He says he began to see things differently, like everything was slightly curved and slightly pixelated. Because of this change in vision, he began to focus on huge mathematics and physics questions. When he began to learn about fractals, which are repeating geometric patterns, but also a fairly difficult math concept, he began to explore the concept further as well as begin creating his own drawings. Basically, Jason's brain injury caused him to acquire a form of synesthesia where certain things will project a vision of a mathematical formula in front of him. He ended up having conscious access to a part of his brain that most of us don't, as well as having the visual cortex work with the part of the brain that does math for us. It's pretty crazy that a bad attack turned him into a mathematical genius, but I am so glad that he not only recovered, but ended up absolutely thriving from something that could have been so much worse. In our number eight spot today, we have Jim Carollo. When Jim was 14 years old, he was in a fatal car accident that took the life of his mother and almost him as well. Jim was in a coma and doctors said he would likely not live longer than a few weeks, but six weeks later, he woke up. Jim was a regular kid before the accident and wasn't a huge fan of mathematics but after the accident, he was able to ace exams without even studying. He skipped all the way to calculus and passed exams even though he had never taken trigonometry before. He also developed an uncanny ability to memorize numbers and could do calculations with incredible ease. In our number seven spot today, we have Zach Clark. In 2019, a 16-year-old football player named Zach Clark was outside helping his mom with some yard work when they heard their neighbors cry for help. The two quickly rushed over and saw that their neighbor had been pinned underneath his car after it had slipped off of the jack. Zach didn't even hesitate and wrapped his forearms underneath the 3,000-pound car and lifted it off of the man so that he could escape. Doctors actually said that the man would have died if Zach hadn't been right there to save him. I'm so glad that Zach was around and that he somehow gained this moment of super human strength when put in this dire situation. In our number six spot today, we have Franco Magnani. 
Franco was born in 1934 in Pontido, Italy, where he grew up before he left his hometown to become a cook. He ended up working on cruise ships that took him throughout Europe and the Caribbean, but eventually he decided he wanted to land in San Francisco. After his American arrival, he ended up coming down with a serious illness that left him with terrible fevers that had him hallucinating and sometimes even having seizures. While he was sick, he began to have intensely vivid visions of his childhood home and the town he grew up in that were filled with amazing details. He ended up being so fixated on these memories that he started to draw and then paint them. The drawings were uncanny compared to the real scenes he was painting, all from memory, which was what made them so remarkable. Doctors described what was going on with him as temporal lobe epilepsy and that it can sometimes create an obsessive personality. I'm not exactly sure what happened to Franco, but it left him with such an incredible talent and ability. It's so crazy what our brains can hold. In our number five spot today, we have Alonzo Clemens. When Alonzo Clemens was a child, he unfortunately suffered a traumatic brain injury that left him with a developmental disability. After the same injury, Alonzo was also able to create very accurate clay sculptures of different animals, even if he had only glimpsed at them. He can also create three-dimensional models of the animals, even if he only previously saw two-dimensional photos of them. Alonzo struggles to tie his shoes on his own and is also unable to feed himself, but when he is creating these sculptures, he is one of the absolute best that there is. Some of his art pieces have sold for as much as $45,000, and honestly, when you see them, I can understand why. If you ask Alonzo how he creates these amazing pieces, he just smiles and points to his head. In our number four spot today, we have Lydia Angiu. Lydia Angiu is a resident of Avujavik, which is an Inuit community in Nanavik, Quebec, in Canada. In 2006, Lydia not only displayed a superpower, but she was also a superhero when she was with her seven-year-old son and two of his friends, and the four of them encountered a polar bear. Do not make Canadian jokes. It is not regular to encounter a polar bear in a populated area. Lydia actually fought with a polar bear to save the three kids until a local hunter arrived and was able to shoot the bear. Listen, I am not a fan of shooting bears, but that is not what this story is about. This story is about Lydia being maybe the strongest, but definitely one of the most brave and amazing people that is out there. I do wish the bear could have lived, but I am really glad that Lydia and the kids ended up being okay. And now Lydia has this unbelievable story to tell for the rest of her life. I feel like her son probably never disobeyed her after he saw her fight a bear. In our number three spot today, we have Tommy McHugh. When Tommy McHugh was young, he was a builder, but he also found himself getting involved in a life of crime. At the age of 51, he ended up having a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is a stroke that is caused by bleeding in and around the brain. After waking up in the hospital, Tommy began to notice that he was seeing things differently. He looked out the window and saw a tree sprouting numbers, three, six, nine, and then he realized that his head was full of rhymes and images and pictures. He said he had never been interested in art before and that he had only maybe been in an art gallery to steal something, but now it was his obsession. He began writing poetry as well as painting and drawing, sometimes for as long as 19 hours a day. He said that the change was that he could taste the femininity inside of himself. Unfortunately, Tommy passed away in 2012 from cancer, but before he passed, he said that his strokes had given him 11 years of a magnificent adventure that nobody could have expected. The brain is so crazy, you guys. I wish that I was a brain doctor, science person, so that I could explain this or figure it out, because I it's so crazy. So cool. In our number two spot today, you guys, we have Derek Amato. Derek Amato was having a fun day in the pool with his friends before a life-changing moment. Derek yelled for his buddy to pass him the football as he dove into the pool, but one moment later, Derek had slammed his head into the concrete floor of the pool so hard that he gave himself an extremely severe concussion. The injury caused him to lose 35% of his hearing in one year and left him with headaches and memory loss, but also a newfound ability. Just four days after the accident, Derek found himself somewhere he had never seen himself, in front of a piano. Despite never having played before, Derek found his hands gliding across the keyboard like he was a seasoned professional. Derek began researching to find out what was going on and found the stories of some of the people we've talked about in this video, such as Alonzo and Anthony. While Derek has had to suffer through a multitude of side effects from his injuries, he continues to say that he believes he was given a gift. In our number one spot today, we have Haley and Hannah Smith. 
In 2013 in Oregon, a man named Jeff Smith was tending to his field when he ended up getting trapped under his tractor. He was yelling for help, but every yell was leaving him more and more breathless. At the same time, his 16-year-old daughter Hannah and his 14-year-old daughter Haley had just returned from school and were taking the dog for a walk when they heard his cries. They rushed over and immediately called 911, but felt like there was no time to wait. The girls each grabbed an end and began trying to lift the tractor off of him. It took a few tries, but eventually on the seventh attempt, they were able to lift it enough that he could get his whole body out from under the machine, aside from one arm. That's when one of the girls ran to a neighbor and they used the neighbor's tractor to free the dad entirely. Hannah has said that she has no idea how they did it, but they just did. Someone from the fire department told the news that he had never seen a pair of girls lift something so heavy before. Even their own father said that he isn't sure he could have done what his daughters seemed to do. It's pretty impressive that Hannah and Haley stayed so calm and collected and were able to do everything that they needed to do and so much more. I'm sure their dad was super proud of them after this insane incident. All right guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. In the comments below, let me know if you can have a superpower, what superpower would it be? I've been your host, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.